he's, I mean, Lee, you have so much heart and ca he cares so deeply about all the nuances and the subtleties and finding the truth in each scene. And this to me is such a passion project, you know? It's not like all this crazy special effects, all the costumes and all the things. This is like character-driven storytelling, heart, you know, unfolding of these of these people. And so it was very, very cool to just drop in and do these scenes and be part of this film and and have him directing. start with a question for our director writer uh, what drew you to this story and why was it important for you to bring rally caps to the screen yeah I, I always wanted to do a movie like the sandlot with that backdrop family kids camp like who who doesn't like the sandlot right um, you know angels on, uh, angels on the outfield uh, f you know hearkening us back to those 90s classics Disney um, movies uh, field of dreams um, so I wanted to always work in that space, but this was a book that sort of uh, gave, well, one, it was an opportunity because I knew the writers, but the other thing was I thought it gave it a fresh perspective because it's about characters. It's kind of, a, I liken it to like, a, it's an indie drama with that backdrop. So I thought that was fresh. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I will say when I was watching it, I wrote down, these were my, my notes to myself, trauma, <laughs> loss, fear, and PTSD. That's like what I got out of that movie. I, Because as a child, I was terrified of that baseball. And when that baseball bat went flying at his face and, and the film opens, we already know that he's lost his father. We see this baseball within like the first 10 minutes of the film, he's wearing that mask. Um, I guess I'm wondering, what did you all have, as, as coming to this film and reading the script and being on this set, did you have a personal, uh, what were your, Inclinate when you first saw it, what were your first instincts about about that character? About Jordy. About Jordy. I mean, what I love about this is that <clears throat> he goes on such a journey from grief and loss and PTSD and uh, um, anxiety, and he has such a journey through baseball camp and healing with his older brother and his mom, and you know all the the elements and then feeling supported by the team and um, the camaraderie. So I just, I personally love that this film, yes, it's a family film and it's a baseball film and it's fun and all the kids are incredible in this, but it has such an underbelly of so much heart and feeling and processing that I, I just love all the aspects of this holds. Yeah, I, I actually coach kids. I've done it for the last 20 years. So when I read the script and then really getting onto the set and hanging out with all the kids, I think what spoke to me most about Jordy uh, is um, the the script gave him room to, um, instead of sweep things under the rug, you know, have tough conversations, which I've found to not be easy when I'm coaching young boys, you know, it's rub some dirt on it and let's get back out there. So for Lee to be able to create this place where boys and girls, preteens could say, you know what, I'm scared. I'm, I'm unhappy. I, what do I do here? And for me as a coach, I think a, a good coach can change a game, but a great coach is with unconditional love just gonna listen and 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 change a life? So um, Lee kind of gave me that opportunity. So, out of boy, coach. Thanks, buddy. Out of boy. Appreciate it. <laughs> um, so, can you tell us a little bit about the process of going from a book to the screen? How much you know? Did you work with the writers on the on the book, and then? what the casting process was. So getting it on, you know, to a screenplay and then casting this great cast. Yeah. Uh, look, the adaptation process is always, um, uh, it's two different mediums. So in books, you can express things in chapters and thoughts. Um, I, I wanted to really focus on Jordy's anxiety and um, 
as the prominent sort of uh, hurdle, the emotional hurdle for him. As far as casting goes, uh, Carson was casted very early, uh, before the pandemic, and then we shut down. And uh, I think a good aspect to that, not you know, uh, was that we had time um, from all the shutdowns to like work on Zoom, and all the actors got to it's the child actors mostly got to work over Zoom, and they they formed relationships, and so the, all that relationships were, were built up before we got to camp. Um, as far as uh, attaching uh, Judd and Amy, it's uh, I made a wish list with our producer uh, Amy Williams, and she she went right after the you know the agents, but they were at the top of the wish list. And uh, I know it doesn't really usually work out that way, but she said yes, and um, here we here we are. Uh, you know, I think Amy was first before Judd, or around the same time. But um, look, uh, they had. Uh, they had uh, pretty significant roles, um, Nora and Pop, but once we attached them, like I went back to the script and I was like, watched all of Amy's movies and of course Judd's movies, and um, it gave me some time to really help mold the characters um, after you know some of the um, strengths that, that I've seen over their prolific careers. Uh, and yeah, so it, it expanded, I would say, from that point. Um, and we shot them out in like three or four days. And then we had to shoot the rest of the, literally Jordy's house was in like three or four days. And then the camp was three months later in New York. Oh, so okay. it was it was completely separated, but we shot all of, it, it really was a springboard for us to have Judd and Amy in the can. Um, and it was the emotional centerpiece of the film. Um, uh, to build on. And so, you know, and obviously they, you know, it's an embarrassment of riches when you're working with, you know, those, uh, you know, those stars and uh, just, just terrific actors. And, you know, her and Judd had, as you can see, I feel like really strong chemistry as a family. Um, and uh, they really cared about the project. And, you know, I'll just say for Amy, I think, you know, look, you know, shooting on our means, it's its really tough. The conditions are tough. You're, you know, you're burning through a lot of pages. You don't have a lot of time to rehearse and talk things through. Um, and she just has incredible instincts uh, I, from her, her experience. Uh, but I also think that just, you know, um, she's just in, incredibly honest. And so she elevated the words on the page um, for those integral scenes. Absolutely. Can you talk a little bit about your experience? Wow, Lee, I want to cry yeah. right now. It's beautiful. <laughs> He's, I mean, Lee, you have so much heart and ca he cares so deeply about all the nuances and the subtleties and finding the truth in each scene. Um, and, and there was a lot, we did shoot it pretty fast. We were only worked three or four days on this. And so it was, you know, kind of like run and gun, <laughs> like, okay. But we, w but we, but Judd was, I mean, he, he's such a legend. Mm -hmm. He's so good. And we took the time we needed in these scenes. And, and Lee, again, he, you know, he's the North Star. He's the one that like is gauging the tone and what, what needs to happen in the scenes and, and so it was just honestly such a gift. And and this to me is such a passion project, you know? It's not like all this crazy special effects, all the costumes and all the things. This is like character-driven storytelling, heart, you know, unfolding of these of these people. And so it was very, very cool to just drop in and do these scenes and be part of this film and and have him directing. What was it like to work with Judd? I mean, he's funny. He's he's just he's very who he is. You know, there you're not getting he, he is who he is, and he is very collaborative and giving and um, good communicator and. He just is a fun person to to work with. I really felt like you were his daughter and he was your father. Like I felt that connection between the two of you. And I really felt like you were Jordy's mom and he was Jordy's pop. So what? how did the three of you develop that chemistry together? 
I mean, Lee, Lee definitely helped sort of all of us come together and um, get to know each other a little bit before um, and just, again, go into the characters and acting. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Come on, guys. We got secrets. I'm yeah, kidding. What are your secrets? What? I can't tell you. <laughs> there are secrets for a reason. No, no. But it it didn't. It wasn't. It didn't feel like a stretch. I'll put it that way. It wasn't difficult. It felt really natural to to create this family. Were, did you do any improvising together beforehand? And Lee, I don't know. Did you remember any of that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. I'll just say. That scene with Jordy on the bench, which was a really big thematic scene, um, on the page it just wasn't working because I was just, I was, you know, the writer was hacky about it. I'm the writer, by the way, uh, <laughs> the, the writer of the screenplay. Uh, but yeah, I was just trying to get the themes in there about, you know, their loss and the, the family dynamic with the superstition and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't working, and I sat down with um, Amy and I told her, like, that much. I was just like, These are, this is falling flat. Um, and so I would like to say that we came up with some great solution, uh, but it was really about Amy cutting down the lines and then just making it, uh, again, purely uh, instinctual. And she made it makes you know she made it honest for herself, and that's why it resonated because it wasn't the, those lines were not there at least you know from my perspective. Um, and her and uh, Judd have, I feel like, have very different approaches, um, and for good reason. Judd's very much like he's thinking about like story stuff, and um, you know, not method actor, but he's you know he he thinks. A, a, I feel like a lot of things he's uh, he 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 cares about. He's thinking about um, the story as a whole. Um, and uh, asking a lot of questions and like he you know for instance when he gets up on that table in that scene uh he was supposed to be sitting there and he like he like he's like reading it when we're on you know on on set he's like it's like lee why why would you know why would i be here like why would i stay i'm like you know i don't know judd it, i does because he's sitting there for the second half of the scene you know not saying anything as you know uh Nora and Rob are having this really emotional moment. And I'm like, I'm not sure. And he's like, well, I'm gonna get the hell out of here. And, and he did. <laughs> um, and so I think those kind of things, like just really trying to make sense for yourself in the moment, um, you gotta ask those questions to the director because it really helps, it helps guide us. Um, and, and, you know, like I said, you know, uh, Amy makes things work. So it's a very, you know, it's a very different process. She's just kind of like, you know, what's there? I'm going to stay in the moment and just make it happen. And, and by the way, that emotional scene that she did, uh, I don't know how she focused because we had a, like a very, it was a very tight corridors. Um, the, uh, not the gimbal, but the slider that we had was very creaky. Um, I was not in the room with her, like, cause I couldn't fit. Um, and I'm like in the kitchen, like watching the monitor and she's just pulling this off with all this chaos. And so just, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how she does it. I, I can't take any credit for that. Secrets. Secrets. <laughs> yeah. We're going to get them out. It is a sack. It's a sack screen. Slowly, so surely. we're supposed to give secrets. <laughs> Speaking of the superstitions in the, in the film, uh, as actors and creatives do, uh, this is for the whole group, do any of you have superstitions or routines that you do before to prepare for a role or before going on set or um, to before filming a scene? Or is anyone willing to admit that? And it, it, well, admit your super my, my kids, I've got a, a nine-year-old daughter and a seven-year-old son, and it was just Friday the 13th, as you know, and they were very uh, focused on the fact that it was Friday the 13th. And at breakfast before school, they were like, do you believe in Friday the 13th and superstitions? And I was like, no. And then I thought about it and I was like, well, I do sort of have little rituals before performances, which it means I'm superstitious, you know, because like those rituals are not really craft. They're just my things. Um, I always try to find something for a role that hooks me into it, whether it's a track of music or a, a photograph or a, some sort of talisman-like thing that in my work on the character starts to make it feel real and personal to me, some way in. Uh, and, and I always have that 
that thing. Um, and uh, yeah, and so I, I think in the end, I yes, I am superstitious in that way. Good answer. Anybody else? Come on, Coach Bolgium, you got to have something. Right? Well, yeah, many face. Uh, while he's thinking, I'm just going to say the casting for um, for him. Uh, he as as he said, he does this in real life. But and I, I see a lot of his fans are watching the movie and they're like, oh, he's just himself. You're just himself, you know. Um, and I think that that's uh, as happy as I am that they're happy, you know, to see you and they're watching the movie and renting the movie. It's undermining uh, your artistry and your craft because James is uh, he is a trained actor. He's a SAG member. Um, he, you know, he was uh, pursuing a, a career in acting, and then he sidestepped it so he can, you know, he built a family and, um, you know, take care of his kids and everything. He formed this other uh, career, and these things, two things merged. But I'll just really say quickly, like I, when I met him, I was just like, oh, we got to get this guy in the film. But I'm just thinking about a cameo. Um, so we, you know, we had the read through and he just, uh, we, the person who was supposed to play Jerry Nathan wasn't there and we're like, okay, this is a bigger sample, bigger sample. Um, yeah, yeah, whatever that guy. Um, <laughs> no, uh, yeah. He, and he, you just, um, yeah. So we gave him Jerry to read and we just saw, cause I knew he was going to be, you know, funny and I, I knew, you know, and zany and all those things, but when he had these levels, uh, it just it would it just wowed us. Uh, and I called him the next day, and I was kind of stumbling, trying to like you know compliment him. And he's like, "Lee, are you giving me the, give me are you giving me the role of Jerry Nathan?" <laughs> what, what, what are you saying here, buddy? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Thank but that's you. craft, man. That's you know you're you know you're a trained actor. You know, there's a lot of people that are like funny in real life, and they think they you know you put on a camera. And they turn into you know deer in headlights, but um, this is this is this is the product of uh, a you know a very trained actor who knows his um, his craft. You're very loving and warm, and I love you. Thank you. Um, I I just tell my friends I I've been method acting for ten years. I've just been coaching kids for ten years, waiting for this role to land on my lap, and it did. Um, but no, I mean, you never lose the love of acting. I just had to pay for my kids' diapers and food and, uh, you know, had to spend time with my wife. So, like, waiting tables, substitute teaching, audition, like, that didn't work. So, I've never lost the love. And then when this came around, it's like, okay, I can do what I do and do that thing I miss. Um so yeah, it was a marriage of, of all my interests and loves. And, uh, as far as like, how do I get into it? I, I, I love to like take the script and just write a billion subtext, just word salad of things I'm thinking. And, um, I, I like to over prepare so I can throw it all away. My favorite actor taught me that Sam Rockwell uh, just oh, yeah. over prepare so you can throw it all away when it's live and uh, so yeah I guess I do that in everything I do it just helps me be present you had a really nice talk pep talk with the kids about my like a mindfulness getting in the zone yeah. is that something that you took from your like was that improvised at all, or is that? Yeah, I mean, I think me, I think I, I, I kind of feel like I improv the whole thing. I was wondering, you know, it felt yeah. like that. But we, we, me and Lee talked a lot. We'd have conversations and be like, "How would you talk to the kids in this way?" Or how would you help Rob uh, kind of build trust with these kids? And it's like, well, you know, you got to give them nicknames and and just listen to them. So, um, uh, 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 what was the question again? You. About being in the zone. That zone, yeah, I do. Because kids get nervous a lot, um, especially in baseball. They're they're afraid. They're worried. Their parents are yelling, micromanaging, and so that adds to the nerves. And so teaching kids to breathe is very simple. I think for kids, you just have to do simple better than everybody else. So I just try to teach them to breathe a little bit better than the last coach. Um, but it... Uh, that that was written by Lee, and I just kind of broke it down line by line, and 
I took it pretty slow. But the funny backstory of that is I don't know. I don't get emotional much, but um, that day I did. I, I uh, Lee was like, I want to get coverage on the kids. So just kind of throw a curveball at them. So I just started talking to them about how they inspired me. Um, when we would play dodgeball or basketball after we'd shoot, there was a kid that was really struggling. I mean, they have to go take classes in between shooting scenes, you know, on the set. So there was a lot of stress and there were some parents that there's just a lot of dynamics. And this one kid was struggling and the whole group really rallied behind this kid. And man, I can, I was crying while I was talking to him, like Rob sitting beside me and he's like, is what's happening right now? And some of the kids were doing the same thing. <laughs> I'm like crying. Um, but yeah, I don't know if you can speak to that at all, but that was Ugh, that was weird. Yeah, but great. Yeah, no, that was definitely really emotional. I think that when we got to camp, there was a good amount of improv. And I just think it was because the familial uh, aspect that was built between you and the kids, uh, because you were you were their coach. There wasn't really an off switch, I think, with, you know. And so it's just like, let you guys, you know, play in the sandbox, you know. Um, so yeah, it was really like just letting you guys have fun and, you know, staying out of the way. Um, but you guys also being very honest to, to ask what you want. Um, and, and, um, I also think it's, it was nice being on the camp setting where we were, this was still during COVID. So we were quarantined. So it was like all of us were going to camp. Uh, we were, you know, sequestered on the, uh, on the campgrounds. And I look for the kids, it's like, uh, you know, I think that people have, um, resonated with their performances and, you know, that's, they felt natural and all that stuff. And again, I'd, I'd love to take credit, but I think a, <laughs> a big part of it was that they got to go to camp. They, we also shot it in September, so they got out of school, mm. right? So that's, you know, they were all having, they were all, they were having fun. So just, just stay out of the way. But, you know, that's a, that's a big part of it, just, just having fun. Uh, you all play mentors, coaches, parents. So how was it? What did you bring to that? And when working with these younger actors, and did you have guidance for them both like on screen and off screen in your role and then in life? Like how were you like working with these younger actors and then also playing a mentor or a parent figure? I'll take this one. Go for it. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Nikki, and my sister and my father wrote the book for this particular film. Uh, I played Elliot, which, thank you, the umpire, and small minor role is great too. This is my first time ever acting in anything. And uh, after that, I started to train as an actor just because of this film. Uh, as a person that has always been to camp, this was very easy for me to play this role because I've always been a camp counselor. So being an umpire, uh, being a lifeguard, that was all very natural for me. And Lee, were, Lee and, and Jerry Nathan were talking about uh, how after we shot, we would play dodgeball. And the kids, they were like a family. They got together afterwards. The, the crew were playing bombardment. They did not go easy on the children. Mm -hmm. And it, it was really like we were at camp. And myself, Jody, who's my sister, who was a co-writer, we would be there uh, playing along with them. And I think it really just, there was a huge camaraderie. Everybody got together in New York yesterday and my sister was telling me it was just like right back that we were at Camp Scatica. And uh, it's just to watch these kids. I mean, they're adult looking now. They shot this when they were chill, little children and now they're giant teenagers. I almost didn't even know who Ben Morang was in the lineup because he was now shorter than the rest of the children. So it, it, it's just, uh, the film has so much heart and to watch my sister and my father, who my father is relentless, he needs he has a dream, he needs to make it happen. He needed to turn this book into a movie and with Lee's help, um, you know, based on true events, my, my nephew is deaf, um, his name is Jordan. There's a lot of non-linear name, you know, Jordan, actually the experience of getting hit with the bat was my father's experience, so it's all, jumbled into my family's uh, history and Lee really helped to make it into this just film bursting with heart and love. So I thank all the actors and everyone.
Any of the other folks want to go ahead? All right. I, I mean, I got to play uh, Jordy's dad, but I was already passed away, so it was kind of a. <laughs> was, <laughs> you know, a lot of a lot of the a lot of a lot of the um, you know the angst and the fear and the and the the pain that's throughout the movie is because of my death. So I finally get to shoot this scene where I come back to life and I come to, to him in a dream sequence. And I, my first impulse is to just be like hugging him. And, I, and I, as an actor, I'm just like, oh my God, what do I do in this scene? It was so weird because I'm, you know, I just, you know, I, I finally figured out just to be, you know, casual and normal, but I really wanted to console him and, and like hug him and say, hey, I'm here. And, you know, but I had to say the dialogue and get the, the exposition in about the glove. And it was just a, it was just an interesting um, experience. But I'm really pleased to be part of this uh, beautiful movie. And uh, thank you for coming, everybody. Yeah. And I got to no, I got to play Amy Smart's husband, but I'd never have a scene with her. So, <laughs> but I can I can always brag, every, you know, for the rest of my life that I played Amy Smart's husband in a movie. Um, was there a particular scene? Uh, this this question's for James. Um, a particular scene in the film that was uh, particularly challenging or particularly rewarding for you? Mm. Well, the first one when. Um, I think the challenging one was when Jerry's uh, characters uh, introduced, uh, and he's got to explain all these things right out of the gates. And and I was coming into it like, man, haven't acted in ten years. I'm gonna blow everybody away with this one. And it was just like, <laughs> like I'm trying to spit everything out, and uh, Lee <laughs> Lee comes in. He's like. You know, we can we can edit this. You can literally, <laughs> you can say one sentence, pause for five minutes, say the next one, and then we'll be good. So um, I, I walked out and 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 I'm, I look at it, the whole crew and I'm like, that was a C minus at best, but I, I'm going to do better. Uh, so that you know, the first day jitters, they they always get you, and you just feel like a bad actor on day one. But you know, Lee was. Lee created a great culture where, you know, everybody was free to fall flat on their face. And uh, that 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 was was great. I think my favorite scene, I love the dynamic with Rob, uh, the older brother. So being able to talk him into hitting some balls, you know, like I'm not your dad, but I loved your dad. And um, let's go hit some baseballs you know that was a really special scene and then we I mean we hit for an hour he hit for an hour I I just pitched but that was a really fun night and made me feel at home because that's what I've been doing for 20 years <laughs> that's amazing how about for you Amy a scene that was particularly challenging or particularly rewarding that sticks out um well I think when you talk about Lee the the bench scene outside um, where he's dealing with the trauma and stuff. Um, that to me felt almost like ethereal. <laughs> it, it went from being feeling stuck and trying to figure out the emotionality and the connection and that and the wording because it was beautifully written, but it was a little too much. And sometimes when you, you know, you want to simplify so it's more impactful and so kind of navigating that. Um, but in the end, it felt, you know, there's always like a scene or two in a film that you're like, how's this going to go? <laughs> you know? And that was one of them. Because um, <clears throat> it has like a lot of nuances to it, but like also encouragement. So I feel like that was probably one of them. How about the bat scene? How did it feel with your bat hitting him in the face? <laughs> that was sort of my joke answer to your question. Which was, <laughs> that's the scene. But um, I mean, yeah, so I only have two scenes. So one one is the one that was went the best and the other one was the hardest. The one, I mean, work, the, the scene with, with Judd and Amy was special for a lot of reasons, including going back to your previous question, I felt like in addition in the chemistry, we haven't talked about sort of the missing father 
felt very present to me. Like that's something that you do your homework as an actor, you prepare for. But when I came in the scene with the two of them, I didn't have to, all I had to do was listen to them and it was, it was there. So that was very powerful and, and fun, um, at fun as an actor. Um, but I was very ner- like throwing a bat, but I couldn't look like I was throwing the bat. Like I had to let the bat slip to hit the camera. I mean, there was plexi in front of the camera. And I was also aware that there were people in the bleachers in the sun. So if I took like 100 takes, they were going to get really mad at me. And so, including Judd and Amy, so I was like, I got I to gotta get this. Uh, but it worked. It worked. Now I know I can do it. Now I have Amazing. that skill. Amazing. It's a great skill. Good skill right? Yeah. Out of curiosity, how many of you were baseball fans before this film? Baseball, okay. Baseball I, fans after this film? Okay, we're the Yeah, and I feel like I can't, like, I'm not at the level of these guys. Like, I played Little League when I was a kid, and I grew up in Boston. You grew up in Boston. You're a Red Sox fan pretty intensely. But I've lived here for a while, so it's less true. But it did reignite. Just, it's a great game, and it reignited that feeling. So can I, go, can we go down the line, and can everyone share who your team is? Go ahead. De- Detroit in there <laughs> somewhere. Uh, yeah. Cubs. I, I usually wear a Chicago Cubs watch, but I grew up in North Carolina. We didn't have any teams, uh, so I watched WGN. Harry Carey narrated my youth. Andre Dawson's my favorite player. Chicago Cubs. Wow. I mean, I, my dad was an actor, and he uh, he took me into the dugout uh, to visit Tommy Lasorda, his buddy, after a game, and I was like nine years old and every player is walking around naked and they're and they're drinking beer and i'm just like what is going on here and, to- and then tommy gets up and he's naked and he gets up behind this is everyone's just walking around naked and it was so but i'm a dodger fan <laughs> that's not why i became a dodger fan i'm a dodger fan in spite of that incident but, I, but you know <laughs> Yeah, that's PTSD. I, um, I, it's hard because the fact that you're streaming this means that I have to say Red Sox because my family and friends in Boston, it has to be. But <laughs> it's re- the real truth is that living here now, and I think also my parents are from Brooklyn, so I think of the Dodgers as kind of the Brooklyn Dodgers. But living here, seeing Otani play, having kids grow up here, there really is something special about the Dodgers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first scene in the movie, the twenty-one thirty-one, uh, when Jordy is throwing the baseball, we were at that game, uh, my dad, my sister, and I. So obviously, the Baltimore Orioles is my team. Yeah, I wish I had something great after all this, but I'm I'm a spoiled, entitled Yankees fan. <laughs> Boo! I know. I, I I didn't know you were a Red Sox fan. So uh, what? Well, one funny story though: think? Judd would not wear. The Oriole cap at first because he's a Yankees fan. True but story. I had to True make story. him put it on. So you have to wear this. Yeah. No, I'm not I had to. It. I had to request it, and then <laughs> he finally put it on. Um, no, but this was a humbling experience because I had to write a story about you know Orioles fans. So I had to live vicariously through them and all the tough times they've gone through. And now, of course, like so, I, I make all these jokes in the in the original script about how bad the Orioles were are, are because they were bad at that time. And then, like you know, uh, like you know, we f- wrapped up th- uh, editing about a year ago, and they were good. So we had to go back to the picture lock and cut out all those jokes that we made about the Orioles. <laughs> so, oh wow, I guess I deserve that. <laughs> well, can you let everybody know where they can see this film, and and wh- can you first tell us what the awards are so far that you've won? Yeah, uh, we premiered at the Heartland Film Festival and we won the Audience Award for Best Narrative um, and then Best Family Film at Sedona. We didn't really have a long festival run, uh, but those were the, you know, um, those those were the notable awards. Uh, you can find it on Amazon or Apple uh, for rent, VOD. Thank you all so much. We are so grateful you came and spoke today.